Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, is a rare autoimmune disorder that affects the peripheral nervous system. It is characterized by the rapid onset of muscle weakness, which can progress to paralysis and potentially life-threatening complications. GBS can have a significant impact on the quality of life of affected individuals, making it an important area of study in the field of neurology. In this detailed script, we will explore various aspects of GBS, including its etiology, molecular mimicry, pathophysiological mechanisms, classification, clinical features, diagnostic criteria, electrophysiological findings, cerebrospinal fluid analysis, immunotherapy options, autonomic dysfunction, respiratory complications, prognostic factors and long-term outcomes, as well as current research and future directions. Through a comprehensive understanding of GBS, healthcare professionals can better diagnose, manage, and provide improved care for patients with this syndrome. GBS is thought to arise from an aberrant immune response following an infection or other triggering events. Multiple infectious agents have been associated with GBS, including certain bacteria and viruses. The most common preceding infection linked to GBS is Campylobacter jejuni, a bacterium responsible for many cases of bacterial gastroenteritis. Other viral infections, such as Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, and Zika virus, have also been implicated. Additionally, vaccination, particularly with the influenza vaccine, has been reported to rarely trigger GBS. Genetic factors may also play a role in determining an individual's susceptibility to GBS. However, further research is needed to fully understand the etiology and risk factors involved. Molecular mimicry is a key concept in understanding the pathogenesis of GBS. It refers to the similarity between certain components of infectious agents and self-antigens present in peripheral nerves. In susceptible individuals, the immune response triggered by the infection can cross-react with these self-antigens, leading to an attack on the peripheral nervous system. Various mechanisms, including the production of cross-reactive antibodies and activation of T-cells, are involved in this process. Molecular mimicry provides insights into the autoimmune nature of GBS and contributes to the development of potential therapeutic interventions. The pathophysiology of GBS involves immune-mediated demyelination and or axonal damage of peripheral nerves. The immune system, activated by the preceding infection or other triggering events, produces autoantibodies that target components of the peripheral nervous system. These autoantibodies can lead to inflammation, damage to the myelin sheath of nerves, and impaired nerve conduction. In some cases, direct attack on the axons themselves may occur. The exact mechanisms underlying the progression of GBS are still under investigation, and ongoing research aims to unravel the precise interplay between immune responses and nerve damage. GBS encompasses several distinct subtypes, which differ in terms of clinical presentation, electrophysiological findings, and prognosis. The most common subtype is acute inflammatory demyelinating polyradiculoneuropathy, AIDP, characterized by symmetrical muscle weakness and diminished or absent deep tendon reflexes. Other subtypes include acute motor axonal neuropathy, AMAN, acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy, AMSHAN, and Miller-Fisher syndrome, MFS. These subtypes have unique clinical features and electrophysiological patterns, aiding in accurate diagnosis and appropriate management strategies. GBS typically presents with rapidly progressive muscle weakness, which usually starts in the lower extremities and ascends symmetrically. Patients may also experience sensory disturbances, such as numbness or tingling, as well as loss of reflexes. The cranial nerves can be affected, leading to facial weakness, double vision, and difficulty swallowing. Pain, particularly in the back or limbs, is another common symptom. Clinical examination findings, in conjunction with supportive diagnostic tests, form the basis for diagnosing GBS. The widely used diagnostic criteria include specific clinical features, such as progressive weakness spanning over days to weeks, absent or diminished reflexes, and the exclusion of alternative causes. Electrodiagnostic tests, such as nerve conduction studies and electromyography, play a crucial role in the diagnosis and subtyping of GBS. These tests help determine the extent and nature of nerve damage, aiding in prognostication and treatment planning. In APE, Nerve conduction studies typically show prolonged distal motor latencies, decreased compound muscle action potentials, CMAPs, and slowing of nerve conduction velocities. In contrast, AMAN and AMSHAN present with diminished or absent CMAPs and preserve sensory nerve action potentials, reflecting axonal damage. These electrophysiological findings, along with clinical features, help guide therapeutic decisions and predict outcomes. Cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, analysis is an indispensable diagnostic tool in GBS. Typically, lumbar puncture is performed to obtain CSF samples, which are then analyzed for specific parameters. 
Key findings in GBS include elevated CSF protein levels without a significant increase in the number of white blood cells. This albuminocytological dissociation reflects the disruption of the blood nerve barrier and indicates the presence of immune mediated nerve damage. CSF analysis also aids in ruling out alternative diagnoses and evaluating disease progression. However, it is important to interpret CSF findings in conjunction with clinical and other laboratory data to arrive at an accurate diagnosis. Immunotherapy plays a pivotal role in the management of GBS. The primary aim of treatment is to shorten the duration and reduce the severity of the illness. Intravenous immunoglobulin, IVIG, and plasma exchange, PLEX, are the two main immunotherapeutic modalities used in GBS. IVIG exerts immunomodulatory effects, reducing the production of pathogenic antibodies and promoting the removal of autoantibodies. PLEX, on the other hand, removes antibodies and other potentially harmful factors from the blood. Both treatments have shown comparable efficacy in clinical trials, and their choice depends on various factors, such as availability, expertise, and patient-specific considerations. Autonomic dysfunction is a significant feature of GBS, affecting various organ systems regulated by the autonomic nervous system. Symptoms can range from mild, such as abnormal sweating or changes in heart rate, to severe, including cardiac arrhythmias and blood pressure fluctuations. Autonomic dysfunction can also lead to respiratory compromise, gastrointestinal abnormalities, and urinary dysfunction. Early recognition and appropriate management of autonomic complications are crucial to prevent life-threatening situations and improve patient outcomes. Respiratory complications represent a major concern in patients with GBS, as muscle weakness can affect the respiratory muscles, compromising ventilation. Close monitoring of respiratory function is essential, especially in patients with severe weakness or those with respiratory distress. Measures such as non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, NIPF, and mechanical ventilation may be required to support respiratory function if the vital capacity falls below a certain threshold. Prompt recognition and intervention can significantly reduce morbidity and mortality associated with respiratory complications. Prognostication in GBS involves assessing various clinical, electrophysiological, and laboratory parameters to predict disease severity and outcomes. Factors associated with a poorer prognosis include older age, rapid disease progression, severe axonal involvement, autonomic dysfunction, and the need for mechanical ventilation. Conversely, milder initial weakness, younger age, and early initiation of immunotherapy have been associated with better outcomes. While most patients experience significant recovery over time, some may suffer from residual deficits or disabilities. Follow-up care and rehabilitation services play a crucial role in optimizing long-term outcomes and promoting the patient's overall well-being. The study of GBS is an active and evolving field, with ongoing research aimed at further comprehending the syndrome's pathophysiology, refining diagnostic criteria, enhancing prognostic tools, and exploring novel treatment options. Recent advances include the identification of potential biomarkers, the investigation of immunomodulatory therapies targeting specific pathogenic pathways, and the use of neurorehabilitation strategies to promote recovery. Collaborative efforts among researchers, clinicians, and patients continue to drive progress in understanding GBS, paving the way for improved patient care and better outcomes in the future. Guillain-Barre syndrome is a neurologic disorder that poses diagnostic and therapeutic challenges. It is a result of immune-mediated nerve damage triggered by preceding infections or other precipitating factors. The interplay between immune responses, molecular mimicry, and pathophysiological mechanisms leads to the characteristic clinical features of GBS. Accurate clinical diagnosis, supported by electrophysiological studies and cerebrospinal fluid analysis, facilitates early intervention. Immunomodulatory therapies, such as intravenous immunoglobulin and plasma exchange, play a vital role in the management of GBS. Prompt recognition and management of autonomic dysfunction and respiratory complications are crucial. Prognostication helps guide treatment decisions and anticipate long-term outcomes. Ongoing research seeks to unravel the complexities of GBS, opening avenues for improved diagnostic techniques, prognostic indicators, and innovative therapeutic approaches in the future. By understanding the intricacies of GBS, healthcare professionals can enhance patient care and optimize outcomes for individuals affected by this challenging syndrome.